There are many different ways to join a rail to a post. Here's a load of them in the most simplistic fashion you can ever imagine. How do? I'm Chris. Welcome to King Bespoke Creations. We are going to look at how to join two pieces of wood together, starting with the most simple technique ever created. In fact, it's so simple, I'm not even going to show you how I put these two screws through this piece of wood into the second piece of wood to hold it in place. Not even going to show you that. Now don't get me wrong, I'm no joinery snob. This is a perfect way to join a rail to a post if you're doing something like a garden fence. Absolutely flawless, you can't beat it, quick, efficient and it'll last forever. But if you're building a piece of furniture or something like that, there's probably a better looking way of doing it. So let's say you were building a freestanding shelf unit or something like that and you wanted a post and you wanted a rail to then put the shelf on top of. Well, it'd be nice if we could recess this piece into this piece. So first thing, put the rail where the post wants to be. Make sure it is nice and square, if square is what you're after. Hold that still, hold that in place. And I would use a knife to just lightly run down each side to mark off exactly where that cut's going to go. Do a few stripes just to make sure that that mark's definitely there. And a presto, there's our width that needs cutting. Now to mark off the depth of the cut that we want, you could hold the rail up, but that's a bit long and cumbersome. So this is where one of these comes in. Super useful tool, brilliant for just setting the depth that you want and transferring it across onto the post. Now with the depth marked off with that gauge, I can then come down the sides to match those up. So just cutting down in between those grooves and then any kind of fine fettling with a chisel just to make it a snug fit, get rid of the rough marks from the saw. And we end up quite quickly with a very pleasant flush joint. But what if you were building a table and you want the rail to attach halfway through this post, nice and flush at the top? Well, for that, we're going to cut out a little tongue or a tenon on this piece so that we have a shoulder to go into the post. So first, we're going to mark off that shoulder. We can make it whatever kind of size you want. Usually an inch or so, an inch and a half will do. And I'm going to score lines on three sides, not all the way around. So we're going to cut this section to be smaller than this section, especially the width of it. Now again, the specific dimensions of the, the width of that tongue and the, the size of the shoulders doesn't really matter a great deal. What I would recommend doing is making that width the same size as one of your chisels, because that will make cutting out the corresponding hole in the post much easier later on. And yes, you can just be as simplistic as holding the chisel on and marking it up the sides. So now we just need to remove these three edges. So again, just saw along the lines, chip the chunks off with the chisel. I always like to just take off half the amount each time until you get up to your line. And then where you have your cut line, do make sure you go in and remove that fuzz from the saw Once you've cut out the tenon, then we can work on the post, which is just marking off where that needs to sit widthways across and how deep that's going to be as well. So this is where I have my little width markings here. And what I'm going to do is just set one of those with the marking gauge again. So I'm starting with the side of the chisel along that groove line and I'm just north of that pencil line so I can still see that and all I'm going to do is just keep nudging up that line all the time keeping the edge of the chisel running along that groove just a few millimeters at a time you'll gradually get deeper as you go back occasionally 
you can just fold some of that rubbish out and keep going backwards. And when you get to the end, you can just tap that out and it'll stay the same width that you've been digging all the way through. But of course, we also need to know how deep that needs to go in. And a neat little trick for that is just to hold the chisel up against that tenon that you've made and just put a little bit of masking tape on and there's your depth gauge. Now we can start heading back towards the pencil line to start emptying out some of those sections and getting closer to depth. And then slot one into the other with a little bit of a wiggle and a presto. There's a nice joint done. Now just glue that in place and there is your forever table frame. Now if you wanted to make something like a bed you might want that rail to be lower down the post rather than sitting at the top. So then we get into that full mortise and tenon. Really simple, make the tenon exactly the same way only all four sides. And then on the post itself you might have a mark to know where you actually want your rail to be but that then allows you to position correctly for the post and then cut that out in exactly the same way that we did before. Now with a lot of mortise and tenon joints like that again you're just going to glue that up and it's going to be a permanent fix but if you are making something like a bed something massive it might want to be dismantled when you need to move it from one room to another perhaps. So how can we fix that in place without using a permanent glue? By simply using some doweling. Now of course what we could do is just go straight through the lot of it with the drill bit and hammer the doweling all the way through. But there's a slightly better way. Remove your rail first, then drill your hole through your post. Once that hole is done, then reinsert the rail. Lightly push the drill bit into the hole to make a little mark on the tenon. And then what we're actually gonna do is drill the hole just a few millimeters closer to the shoulder than that lump. Now the reason that we want to do that little offset with the hole is so that when you drive the doweling in what it's actually going to do is pull the beam in that little bit tighter creating an even more snugger joint. Now of course once that's in that's there and permanent until you drill it back out. What I like to do is to cut that off just slightly proud and use a file with a safe edge to just round over those edges just a little bit so that totally becomes a feature rather than something that we want to try and hide. Lovely! Now the last variation of a mortise and tenon joint that I want to show you today is if you're putting a tenon into a thinner piece of wood rather than a big fat post. For example at the bottom of a lot of picnic tables you will see it's a big slab sided thing and the rail at the bottom goes through and then gets pegged. So make your tenon exactly the same way that we have done before only this time we're making sure that it's long enough to go through the board and poke out the other side with quite a decent margin. Again, a good inch, inch and a half I think you're going to want. So with the tenon in place, again, I'm going to mark off the edges and the widths. Now I'll draw on with the pencil just to make it stand out a little bit more. And this is where I'm going to change tack a little bit from what I would normally do. Because this is a thin sheet, the last thing I want to do is go pounding through it with a chisel and blow out the back because it needs to look good from both sides. So this is one of the only times that I'll actually use a drill to get rid of most of that internal material. 
but even then I'm only going to go slightly in from one side and then mark off with a pre-drill to come in from the other side again to make sure that there's no blowout from one side to another. Now once you've cut halfway through one side when we turn it over again you can actually then see exactly where you're supposed to be chiseling to to mark off this side just as accurately. And with that fitting through and correctly in place I've then got again another piece of dowling with the slightest flattened taper put on it so that when you put that up against there you can mark off the very edge of that hole so that as you bash the peg through the fatter end should wedge it in place. So you can see how all of those different types of joints, different uses, all pretty much come from the same technique. And it's only up to you how you change any joint that you know to make fit into what to do next. Mortis and tenon, half lap joint, pinned, glued, that is all up to you. Make sure you check out this video next because I think you'll love it and find it really, really useful. And until next time, Subscribe, like, share, do all those things, and I'll see you soon. God bless.